up guys it's Mike the smoking monkey and we're back on the SV I know I've been promising you guys more videos and believe me I want to make more videos but things just keep coming up and unfortunately I haven't had the time but I'm gonna make the time guys <laughs> but no seriously it's a beautiful day I'm so glad to be out here I uh, actually I'm out on one of my favorite roads this is the Forks of the Credit out in, I guess, Caledon or just before Orangeville. Uh, the little town that it's in is called Bell Fountain. If you live in Ontario, then I'm sure you can find it. And I'm sure you've been here if you have a motorcycle because it's just a very scenic and awesome road to ride down because it's very windy and there's lots of nice things to see, lots of cool places to stop. And even if you're not on a motorcycle, there's lots of little shops and like ice cream shops and crap like that and all kinds of little cute little things for you to go and explore. But honestly, for me, I love the riding. I love coming down here and going down these roads. It's my favorite place because there isn't too much traffic. There's nice things to see and there's actually good roads. They're well maintained and they're just well set up. So it's always a good time. And hopefully, yes, you waited for me, thank you. And hopefully we have a good time today on this road, but that is not the reason that I'm, a I'm making this video. Today we are going to talk about what tools you need to work on your SV650 or any motorcycle for that matter. But I'm going to be w talking specifically about the SV650 because that's what I have, that's what I work on, and it's easier for me to show you what tools I use. Now I'm sure that most motorcycles, I'm going to say not all, but most are going to be similar and they're going to have pretty much the same kind of setup, the same kind of tools you're going to need. They might have different sizes of bolts, they might have different uh, endings, like they might not be hex heads, they might be allen heads, or they might be hex, uh, not hex, but uh, uh, what's the word, like the, the inverted star. So it might be all kinds of different things, you don't know what you're going to get and definitely you want to be prepared for all of that so i'm going to show you something that you guys should get that will help you out in every situation whether it be this motorcycle your other motorcycle or even your car so it's going to be basically basic tools that anybody can use anybody can get and the reason i stopped and turned around is because that way is back into the city and i'm going to run through this one more time for you guys and show you guys just how beautiful and how nice it is out here and then we'll go back to my place. I'll show you the tools that we use or that I use and we'll go from there. So if you guys have any questions on the tools, uh, definitely wait till the end of the video because I might answer them for you already. And right now, enjoy the ride. And I am gonna mention, I'm not gonna be going too fast. Uh, I would like to run through this a little bit quicker than I'm gonna be doing it, but there was a couple cops sitting around. So today's gonna be a nice leisurely cruise through the forks of the credit and hopefully you guys enjoy it as you can see they're uh they're trying to keep us going slow there's cops everywhere they put up signs so let's try not to get caught so enjoy the ride guys
and that's pretty much the end of it it just kind of goes straight from here to the end of the road so I'm gonna head back to my place now show you guys what tools I use and hopefully you guys can tell me if I missed anything and if there's any tools that you guys want to see that I and I usually like to run that a little bit faster uh, usually staying in third gear and no that's not a cop <laughs> that almost got me on the way in though I thought it was but uh, like I said I usually like to keep in third gear for this whole road but since I seen a couple cops around I'm not trying to risk it today and let's just take it easy and have a good time but honestly I think that road is one of my favorite in this area I haven't found another one that's quite as fun to ride but if you guys have any roads that are similar or that are even better than that, then let me know because I want to hit them up. But hopefully they're closer to my area because I'm not trying to ride two hours just to hit one little road. But definitely let me know if you guys know of something that's within like an hour of Toronto because this takes me about 45 minutes to get to. Oh man, that was a Grom. This guy's killing it down the highway on the Grom. Yes, I still want one of those guys. I don't know if you remember from last year, I was talking about getting one and I haven't forgotten, I still want one and I'm still looking for one. As soon as the opportunity comes up, I'm going to pick one up. I just don't want to go and spend four or five grand on a brand new one. Uh, trying to find something used, so hopefully we can find something. Oh man, look at that view guys. And somebody's house on fire. Woo! Oh no! <laughs> what the fuck was that? When you're on a bike, people see you trying to go and they just get scared. They're like, screw it, let him go. I don't need him crashing into me. <laughs> or they're just super courteous, which thank you very much. But uh, I doubt everybody who moves over is super courteous. I bet a lot of them are super nervous. Thank you, buddy. Can't tell you how many times I've seen guys look down the street and then still go for it, even though I'm like this far from the light. And then you got to go around them because as soon as they get in the middle of the intersection they stop because it's like a deer in headlights they see you coming and they don't know what to do so they don't want to keep going because they think they're going to hit you but stopping is the worst thing they can do and yet they do it <laughs> so now it's your choice do you go in front of them or behind them personally i like going behind them because if they decide they want to go at the last minute i don't want to be in their way it actually amuses me how useless this range gauge is on this SV650. <laughs> For all you guys who have an SV650, tell me if yours is the same. I literally left my house, it said 220 kilometers left in the tank. All right, I've done 73 and it says 215. So we're making gas somehow. <laughs> Obviously the calculations are wrong and I know that it updates it depending on how you're riding and if I'm on the highway then that's what it's going to calculate and that's what I was riding just now but it still shouldn't be that much of a difference. It shouldn't be off by like that many kilometers. And we are gone. And that's like 20% throttle on this thing. A lot of people don't actually notice it, but like bikes aren't made to the same standards as cars. To get yourself a car that'll be as fast in acceleration as a motorcycle, you have to go out and buy like a Porsche or a Lamborghini or like some shit like that. Or you gotta build the crap out of your car. Because a McLaren Senna does zero to 100 in 2.8 seconds or 2.9 seconds. This thing does zero to 100 straight from the factory in 2.8 seconds. So do you want to spend a couple million or do you want to spend 8,000? Uh, <laughs> not saying I wouldn't want a supercar. Believe me, if I could, I would. But it's just amazing how much bike you can get for the money. And for anybody that doesn't have one of these SVs yet or wants to get an SV, trust me, man, go ride one. Just take one for a test ride. Like, I'm not getting paid by Suzuki. I'm not making no money off of this by telling you go ride a Suzuki. But it's a great bike. It honestly is. That being said, if you guys want to sponsor me or throw me some oil or something for my bike, then uh, just definitely link me, guys. <laughs> I'm happy to work with anybody, especially Suzuki. And with the amount of people that write in the comments section that they bought their bike because of me, I'm pretty sure I'm responsible for a good portion of their SV650 sales. 
<laughs> like all around the world not just here in Canada but like everywhere around the world you guys owe me a commission man come on but hey I'll be a nice guy about it you don't have to cut me a commission on all the SV650s or any of the future ones send me a different bike send me something that you guys have just come out with a brand new model I'll review the shit out of it I'll put tons of mods to it and I'll make sure that I give you guys my honest opinion and believe me if it's a good bike people will buy it so just send me a link I'll send you the address you guys can drop off the bike anytime you want oh that's an awesome color for the Challenger I love that OD green damn that looks nice I won't lie I've actually been thinking about wrapping my tank in that same color just like the tank and maybe the tail and then get some nice knobby tires going but that would be probably in the future if I have a second bike then I would maybe do that but this is gonna be a street fighter for now uh, honestly I don't have a second bike so I want something that I can just go and ride down the road and take anywhere but it would be awesome to throw some knobby tires on this thing give it a nice new wrap and just have something I can go on and off-road with maybe maybe in the future we'll see it would have plenty of balls like this thing would have a little bit too much power to go off-road but I think it would be a fun time I just don't know how the suspension would hold up I know a lot of people do take street bikes and sports bikes out onto the like onto the trails and onto the dirt and they just put different tires on them but I'm interested to see how that actually works out if they uh, if they last or they don't last because your suspension isn't sealed the same way on a street bike as it is on a dirt bike and it's also a lot stiffer so it's not gonna be as forgiving so I'm, just, I'm assuming you're gonna slide around a lot more and not have as good of a time but I could be wrong so if any of you guys have any experience with that let me know I'm actually really interested and we're back now in the garage so I know I'm a little uh, sweaty and wet but let's get through this guys so the first thing that I would say that you would need to work on your motorcycle is a good set of pliers and screwdrivers now these ones aren't the exact ones I would say to go get this is actually just like the cheapest pair that I have laying around that I just grabbed really quick not even out of my toolbox these were just laying around here in the garage but the main thing that I'm trying to say is you're gonna need some pliers you're gonna need some screwdrivers uh, you don't need to go crazy get a couple Phillips heads and get a couple of flat heads and you should be good now the main thing if you don't have a big toolbox like myself or if you're just starting out and you don't have all the tools that you need you don't have to go out and fill a toolbox like this with all kinds of wrenches and all kinds of sockets and like I've got pliers and vice grips and all kinds of stuff like you don't need to go this crazy and go out and spend all this money I have this because I actually used to work in the trade and I used to be a mechanic for five years but whatever that's a different story for another time so the main thing that I would say for you guys to get for anybody starting out that wants to work on their own motorcycle or their own car is a nice socket set and something like this see mine's already falling apart it's been 10 years that I've had this thing so basically you've got everything in here from your standard to your metric sockets you've got deep sockets short sockets you've got three different sizes of ratchets you also usually get a bit driver which is this guy right here which basically is kind of like a screwdriver but it is an all-in-one screwdriver so let me just get this on here there so basically with this guy you have all these bits here and you can put on basically any kind of head on there to drive any kind of screw and you also get allen bits and these hex bits so these are the hex guys that I was talking about earlier and you also get allens so you've got everything in here uh, pretty much a little bit of everything even some allen keys you've got a couple of swivels there's some extensions in here and pretty much every socket set that you're gonna get around the 200 piece mark is gonna look like this it's gonna have basically the same stuff inside and you're gonna have more or less a quarter inch a three-eighths a half inch uh, sometimes you'll have some wrenches here I've got some allen wrenches or allen keys whatever you want to call them uh, actually also you'll get a 
spark plug removal tool. So anybody who wants to do spark plugs on their vehicles, you're going to need one of these. This has a little gasket inside that actually grabs the spark plug and pulls it out for you. And that is very helpful because you don't have to use a magnet and you don't have to do all kinds of trickery and fuckery. So with a socket set like this, you'll be able to do pretty much almost any fastener on your motorcycle. From changing your mirrors where they have little Allen fasteners, Allen keys, to doing anything like adding a windshield, you have to remove these. Those are regular hex bolts. Uh, you'll be able to change your oil or even change your exhaust. As you can see, it's just simple fasteners all over the bike. Uh, you want to add some sliders or even go and change out your rear sets or your front sets. You can do it with almost any socket set because it'll come with all the little uh, bits that you need for Allen keys, for hex heads, and for hex heads. I mean, uh, for Allen heads, for hex heads, and for the star heads, the ones like this. Now, I don't know if there's any of these actually on the motorcycle, but you will have a lot of Allen heads. And the only other thing that I would suggest for working on your own motorcycle is getting yourself a rear and front stand. That way the bike is actually sitting level and it's easier to work on. You don't have to worry about it moving on you. You don't have to worry about it rolling away, anything like that. And you'll be able to tighten your chain, take off your wheel, grease your chain a lot easier because you'll be able to let the wheel free spool and run by itself. You can start the bike and just let it do that while you clean your chain and grease your chain. But Pretty much anything you're going to need to work on your motorcycle will come in one of these. Other than the screwdrivers and the pliers, I think that the best bet for everybody is to pick up a socket set. And one of these portable ones in a case is usually your best bet because you can take it with you, put it anywhere, hide it somewhere, uh, put it in your trunk and just leave it there so if you're ever broken down on the side of the road you have tools. And honestly, it's just something that I think everybody should have in their house. Well, that's it for today's video, guys. I told you it was pretty simple tools, pretty easy stuff. Like, pretty much anybody can go pick up a socket set or a wrench set and work on their own stuff because it's not that hard. Watch some tutorials, learn how to do the job before you do it, and you should be able to get through it pretty easy. Now, take your time. There is some times where it doesn't go the way it should. And just have patience because in the end, as long as you take your time, you will get it done. And other than that, thank you guys for watching. Thank you for sticking around this long. Let me know if you guys want me to add anything or if there's any tools that you guys want to see or any specific jobs. Um, I will be doing a brake job for you guys soon. I don't have to replace my brakes just yet. But I will take it apart and show you guys how to service your brakes yourself because it's very simple. And a lot of you guys have been asking me, so I figured I'll make that video for you just so that you guys know how to do it yourselves. But it's pretty simple. If you've done it on a car, you can do it on your bike. So once again, thank you for watching, guys. And don't forget to leave me a like and a comment. And don't forget to subscribe because there's tons more videos coming your way. And I hope to see you guys there with me. So until next time, guys, ride safe out there. Peace.